Welcome to this lesson on quadratic equations uh, and uh, part of the quadratic functions topic. I'm going to assume that we, we know how to solve quadratic equations. If you don't, then go back and check some of the lessons on that. What we're going to look at are uh, contextual problems, problem solving, where uh, we've got to use a, the solution to a quadratic equation uh, to help us solve a pr problem. And there's one particular interesting feature of these is that uh, quite often we're dealing with dimensions uh, of uh, the size of, of different shapes and therefore we're only really interested in positive solutions. Sometimes in a quadratic equation you can get a negative answer. In these kind of situations it becomes a purely theoretical exercise if they're negative. If they can't be, if, if you're talking about dimensions of a square or a rectangle, it can't be a negative and therefore the negative solutions are what we call invalid, not invalid, but invalid. In other words, they just can't, they don't make sense. Okay, and we so we ignore them. So here's uh, an example of uh, a problem. It's not much of a story, it just says calculate the value of n in this right angled triangle. So we've got uh, three sides, right angled triangle. Um, so according to Pythagoras' theorem, the square of the hypotenuse is equal to the sum of the squares of the other two sides. So we can say that n plus 4 squared, for that is the hypotenuse opposite the right angle, is equal to uh, n squared plus n plus 2 squared. And if we multiply these uh, out, we get, now depending on your technique, you might want to n plus 4 squared, you might want to write it out as n plus 4 multiplied by n plus 4 and do it that way. Or if you know how to kind of do the kind of quick way of squaring terms, you square, square the first term, n squared, multiply them together and double it. So n times 4 is 4n, double it, plus 8n, and square the last term is plus 16. So that's the way in which we could quickly square a binomial term there. And it's same with the second, n plus 2 all squared. Square the first term, multiply them together and double it, and then square the second term, and we get plus 4. Okay. Uh, I've got a wee bit of uh, simplifying to do on the right-hand side in that we've got two n squared terms. Okay. Now, what we've got to do is to... We've got an equation in, involving n squared terms. So we need to arrange it in the form of a quadratic equation, which means that we've got to get everything equal to zero. So we've got to take everything to one side. It doesn't matter which side that is. Because of the 2n uh, squared here, I'm going to imagine I'm going to subtract n uh, squared from both sides. Okay, and I'm going to subtract a n from that and I'm going to subtract 16 so that that becomes 0 and we've got 2n squared minus n squared is 1n squared 4n minus 8n is negative 4n and 4 minus 16 is negative 12 okay so that's me got the equation n squared minus 4n minus 12 equals 0 there's all sorts of different ways you can do that but that's one particular way. So we've got a quadratic equation now which we should be able to solve. Now in these type of examples we shouldn't need to use the quadratic formula. They should factorise at this stage. So it's 1n squared, that's good. So it's n and n and we're looking for factors of negative 12 that add together to give negative 4. So factors of negative 12 that add to negative 4. So 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4 uh, you could see it's going to be 2 and 6 we're going to use. Uh, one's got to be negative, and it's going to be the bigger values negative so that we can get positive 2 and negative 6. Just check. They multiply together to give me negative 12, add to negative 4. I factorise it. What do we do then? Uh, well, what we, we then say is that either, because two numbers multiplying equal 0, we can say either n plus 2 equals 0 or n minus 6 equals 0. Solve uh, both of these small equations, n equals negative 2 and n equals 6. So normally I would write down solutions 
n equals 2, negative 2, or n equals 6. But quite clearly, because n is the dimensions of one of the sides of the triangle, n can't be negative 2. Okay? Uh, so we can write, basically, uh, an invalid solution um, or not valid solution as a solution because it's negative. So our only answer is n equals 6. So we can write down here the solution is n equals 6. Does that answer the question? It says calculate the value of n in this right angle triangle. It does answer the question and therefore I've written down solution n equals 6. There we go. Okay, but it is really important not just to ignore the negative 2, you've actually got to write down an explanation that's not valid. Um, as we could say, even just to be even better than that, we could say uh, as n has got to be uh, greater than 0. We, we, we need it to have a value, a positive value. Okay, let's have a look at a second one. Uh, and there's quite a bit of text in all of this. I'll read it through. A uh, rectangular football field has a perimeter of 140 metres and an area of 1,200 square metres. Taking x as the length of the pitch, find an expression for its breadth. So one of the first things you'd often be asked to do is to create the quadratic um, equation. And in order to do that, we need to start bringing in some dimensions here. Taking x as the length of the pitch, OK, so we can write that in. Here, x is the length of the pitch, x meters. Find an expression for its breadth. Okay, so we've got some information about perimeter and area. So if we're working on part A, we know the perimeter is 140 meters. Now, the perimeter is made up of two lots of the length and two lots of the breadth. And we know the perimeter is 140 and we've just decided, or we've just been told, that x is the length of the pitch. So we can say that 140 is 2 lots of x plus 2b. So we want an expression for the breadth. So if we subtract 2x from both sides, we want to rearrange the subject of the formula to b, effectively. So we're going to subtract 2x from both sides. We get 140 minus 2x equals 2b. And then we want to divide by 2 to get rid of the multiply by 2. And so we simply divide everything there by 2. 140 divided by 2 is 70. Minus 2x divided by 2 is just x. And there is our solution. That b is equal to 70 minus x. Okay, there's other ways of working that out. <clears throat> What you could have said is, if the whole perimeter is 140, it means that the one length and one breadth would have to just be half of that, which is 70. And therefore, if the total is 70 between length and breadth, then the breadth would have to be 70 minus x. So you could just do it kind of informally like that. So there are various ways in which you could get the answer, but that's what we're looking for. So first of all, we're asked to actually come up with the, dimen the, the expression for the dimensions. Secondly, it says form an equation for the area of the pitch and solve it to find x. Okay, So we're told that the area of the rectangle is length times breadth, which is x multiplied by 70 minus x. But we're also uh, told that the area is 1,200. So again, we can stick that in on the left-hand side and we end up with 1,200 is equal to 70x multiplying out minus x squared. So I've got a quadratic equation, but it's not in the right form because it doesn't have all the, the number, the value terms equal to zero. So I need to rearrange a bit of it. So if I want to think about the fact that x squared term is negative, so if I add x squared to both sides, then they'll disappear. And if I subtract 70x from both sides, then that will cancel out. So we'll have 0 on the right-hand side. So on the left-hand side, I've got x squared minus 70x, 
and that 1200 is positive equals and I've got nothing left on the right hand side. Okay, now I've got uh, an equation here in the correct form. Uh, I need to factorise that. Now, that's a wee bit, uh, the numbers are quite big, uh, but I'm hoping that it all work out. So I've got x squared at the front, so that could be x and x. I'm looking for factors of 1,200. There's a lot of them. Um, and they have to basically have a difference of, well, in fact, not quite. If you notice that that's positive 1,200, the sum is negative, it means that both the factors have to be negative. So, I mean, it's obviously not going to be 1 in 1,200. Uh, uh, there's kind of lots of them that we could think about. And sometimes you just have to be patient, maybe write them down. We're, we're look, obviously looking for numbers a wee bit more closer together. So I'm going to think about something like we could go to 12 and 100, uh, not quite. We're looking for numbers that add up together to give us 70. So we're looking for much closer things. <coughs> How about uh, 30 and 40? Yeah, that, that's more realistic. So you could spend ages trying to list them all, but you want to jump to somewhere that, where the numbers are a wee bit smaller. Um, and we could say 30, x minus 30 and x minus uh, 40. Okay. So, what have we got here? If we're uh, multiplying those two terms together, uh, then we can say that um, either x minus 30 equals 0 or x minus 40 equals 0. Solve those two and we get x equals 30 or x equals 40. Neither of them are negative. So what, how come there's two solutions there? Uh, well, it's kind of straightforward in the sense that uh, we haven't quite worked out, uh, you know, we've said x is the length of it. We haven't specified that it had to be the bigger of the two numbers. So we're saying that if x is 30, uh, if it's 30 metres long, then 70 minus x 30 is 40 metres wide, but it could also be 40 by 30, and the perimeter and the area would be the same. Okay, so uh, we've solved it to find x. Both of them are valid, so we can say uh, solutions are x equals 30 or x equals 40. Oops. And we just have to kind of decide, so write down the dimensions of the pitch. So the reality is that if x is 30, if the length is 30, the breadth will be 40. If the length is 40, the breadth will be 30. So we can just say, rather than specify, we just say the dimensions of the pitch Are, it's going to be 30 metres by 40 metres and we don't have to specify which is which. The likelihood is that x is 40 but at the moment there isn't a necessity for that to be the case. It could just be a very wide football pitch. Okay, So there's a, a second example and here's a third example, an old exam question. Uh, the height of the triangle uh, is given, so is the base. The area is 7 square centimetres. Calculate the value of x. So we've got the area is 7 square centimetres. If you want to pause it and try it yourself, that would be fine. Okay, so the area of a rectangle is a half times the base times the height. So we can substitute in, certainly on the uh, left-hand side, we know the area is 7 in actual fact. And we've got a half times the base is 2x and the height is 2x minus 5. Um, so 7, now I could make that easier by multiplying both sides by 2. Um, and that get rid of the half there. It could do. Um, so I'll write 14 equals. So that gets rid of that. Uh, and we're multiplying out uh, by 2x. So that gives us 4x squared. Uh, minus 10x. Again, I've got a, a quadratic equation, but it's not in the correct form. So I need there to be 0 on one side. It would be easier to get 0 on the left-hand side if I subtract both sides uh, by 14. That will go to 0, and I get 0 equals 4x squared 
minus 10x minus 14. Now you notice that they're all even. So if I divide by 2 and I'm going to flip them around and we end up with 2x squared minus 5x minus 7 equals 0. Uh, so we can solve that quadratic equation. Unfortunately, it's got a 2 in front of it, so it's not quite as easy to factorise, but it is an exam level question. 2x squared at the front will mean that there's 2x in one bracket and x on the other. And you might have a system uh, in play to help you kind of work the rest of it out. Uh, and what I would suggest you do is you write what 2x and x in the, the table here. We're going to take factors of negative 7. So that's not too bad because there only are a few. We've got uh, 7 and negative 1. It's got to be negative. So it could be uh, 7 and negative 1 or it could be uh, negative 7 and positive 1. Okay, you don't have to write all the, the possible combinations at first, just pick them and see. So remember that we're multiplying across the uh, the levels here. 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x, and x times positive 7 is positive 7x. Add them together, and that's positive 5x, which is not what we want. We want negative 5x, but it does give me a hope that uh, it's the same numbers but in the other place. So let's check and see. Um, where are we? Oh, that, sorry, the, the, the signs are wrong. Let's just check. I've written down this the other way. x times negative 1 is negative x. 2x times 7 is 14x. So that gives 13x. No, nope, that's not right. So here, a third attempt, 2x times 1 is 2x. x times negative 7 is that. We could have uh, just taken the answers from the first one, 7 and negative 1, uh, and flipped them around, the signs around. Uh, but I had them written out, so I thought I would be systematic. So there we go. We've got negative 5x in the middle, so I want 2x and negative 7, and I want x and positive 1. So if I solve those two, I need to say first number times the second number is 0. It means that either... 2x minus 7 equals 0, or x plus 1 equals 0. And if I solve them, 2x is 7, which means x is 7 over 2, or 3.5. And here we've got x equals negative 1. Okay. Well, again, uh, we can't have x being negative because the, the base of the triangle is 2 times x, which would be negative 2. Okay. We can say that x equals negative 1 is not valid as we need x to be greater than 0 or positive. So we can say that the calculate the value of x, our solution is x is equal to 7 over 2 or 3.5 centimetres. Okay. So there we go. Uh, there's been some uh, problem solving questions involving quadratic equations and I hope that's helped you go on and uh, give you the confidence to do a few more yourself.